Hi, I'm Chris Garcia. Welcome to Stanford University on this beautiful December day. My lab is interested in the structural biology of receptor ligand interactions and understanding how receptor structure is mechanistically linked to signaling and function. The study we're presenting today focuses on a particular class of cell surface receptors called cell adhesion molecules, or CAMs. CAMs interact with one another to form a wide variety of adhesion structures that bridge tissues and form cell-cell junctions. Their role in mediating these interactions can be considered somewhat analogous to molecular Velcro. What we don't have a clear understanding of is how the specific extracellular architectures of these complexes and the structural properties of CAMs uh, are important for specifying function or whether they simply provide a sticky surface uh, to form a cell-cell junction. So in this paper, we collaborated with Kang Shen's lab here at Stanford and Tom Wall's lab at Harvard to ask if and how the manner in which a family of CAMs engage one another impacts on function. For our studies, we focused on a group of CAMs utilized in animals in many different adhesion structures. It's the family of proteins homologous to C. elegans, SIG1 and SIG2, which are immunoglobulin superfamily CAMs. These proteins not only specify synaptogenesis, by mediating adhesion between guidepost vulval epithelial cells and the axon of NC elegans, but also have adopted many other functions in arthropods and vertebrates, including formation of the slit diaphragm in the kidney by the nephrons. SIG1 and SIG2 contain multiple IG domains, but we crystallize the N-terminal 4 IG domains of SIG2 complexed with the N-terminal 2 IG domains of SIG1, and we saw a very unusual orthogonal, almost perpendicular docking geometry between SIG1 and SIG2. And the SIG2 IG domains were in an extended, rigid conformation. We also determined the structures of the SIG1 orthologs, roughest, dumbfounded, and NEF1, and they also exhibited the same orthogonal docking geometry. And intriguingly, we found that the interface between all of these complexes were mediated by the same residues. So, one protein interface mediated both homophilic and heterophilic interactions. We were curious about the disposition of the other Ig domains in the full extracellular domains. And for this, we turned to electron microscopy and collaborated with Tom Walsh lab. And using single particle imaging, they found that SIG1 and SIG2 also adopted extended conformations when looking at their full extracellular domains. And we were able to see the SIG1, SIG2 complex formed an L-shaped structure, which recapitulated the orthogonal docking geometry that we saw by crystallography. From this, we were able to construct a molecular model for the full extracellular complex of SIG1 and SIG2 that would bridge the synapse in C. elegans. And this generated a number of testable hypotheses in the C. elegans in vivo. And these questions that we asked were the following. Is this orthogonal docking geometry important for synapse formation? And to do this, we replace the N-terminal binding domains of SIG1 and SIG2 with those from other IG domain pairs that dock in a different geometry, and then put them into C. elegans and asked about function. Secondly, we asked if the rigidity of the extracellular domains was important for synapse formation, and to do this, we introduced flexible linkers between select Ig domains of SIG2 and also examined the function of these molecules in vivo. Hi, I'm Kang Shen from the biology department at Stanford and the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. We discovered the C. elegans SIG1 and SIG2 genes in the process of studying how neurons choose their synaptic partners. We found that mutations in the SIG1 or SIG2 genes compromises the ability of the HSN neurons to choose their synap correct synaptic partner and form synapses at the right location, and leads to the abnormal synapse formation onto inappropriate partners. In the wild-type animals, along the long axonal projection of HSN, the synapses are restricted to a short segment of the axon contacting the SIG2 expressing guidepost epithelial cells, as evidenced from the dist restricted distribution of the synapses. In a SIG1 mutant, the synapses are displaced to an anterior location. Using this as a faithful phenotype, we can dissect uh, which features of the structure interaction is required for its in vivo activity. 
First, we used the, utilized the structure information and defined mutations at the interface between SIG1 and SIG2 and replaced the endogenous SIG1 and SIG2 molecules with these mutant pairs. And remarkably, we found that the biological rescuing activity of SIG1 and SIG2 closely correlate with their affinities in vitro, suggesting that this synapse phenotype is a faithful readout for the interaction between these molecules. Second, we tested whether the rigidity of this interaction is required for its activity by inserting flexible linkers between the Ig domains. And interestingly, we found that with the inclusion of the linkers, the rescuing activity of SIG1 and SIG2 is significantly compromised, suggesting the rigid configuration is important. Third, we chose other Ig pair interaction pairs with orthogonal or parallel configurations to replace the Ig domains. And we found that only the orthogonal interactors can achieve a significant amount of rescuing activity. Collectively, we're beginning to see how the structure of the SIG1, SIG2 adhesion complex is playing a role in specifying function through assuming a, a distinctive orthogonal docking geometry as well as the highly rigid extracellular domains, and this might contribute to the close packing of these complexes within a dense meshwork-like adhesion structure mediating the synapse. We'd like to acknowledge our colleagues who carried out this work. Engen Ozkan was a, was a postdoctoral fellow in the Garcia Lab here at Stanford. Po Hui Cha was a graduate student in Kang Shen's lab. And we'd also like to thank our collaborators at Harvard and UT Southwestern for their contributions to this work. And we acknowledge Howard Hughes Medical Institute for their support.